Welcome to this week's TDD Weekly Report for the week ending August 22nd. First up, I would like to thank the three that sent in response videos. Last week I did a video with some hands-on about tools and gadgets and especially old tools. Well, I got two responses to that and then another, a third response to my GoPro 5 TDD report from the week before. The first two responses were from my friend Bill, BC65925, where he shows off his two-handled crescent wrench. If you get a chance, check that out, and those links will be the first three links I post down in the description for the reply videos. Uh, also, Muzzle Mike, he did a reply video on old tools, and an uh, old tool that he took some time to fix and restore, make it useful again, and I think he picked it up for nothing. And then NT8 did a, uh, he did basically the same kind of a commentary on an article I did, but his is much expanded over mine, much longer video. He gets in more detail, and if anybody knows about GoPros, he's been with the GoPro scene since the old days of, uh, the, before HD GoPros even existed. So check out those three videos, and I really appreciate uh, responsive videos and comments to me are some of the greatest things about doing this show, getting responses this way. So first up, this is from, let me give credit here, uh, oh, this one I, okay, this one I found myself. I actually think this should be probably credited to uh, uh, Bob 1954 Shadow because I caught this because it was something he did a like on and it came up with this article on Facebook, Royal Enfield opening North American subsidiary. This is from Motorcycle.com. I'll just read the first couple of paragraphs. Royal Enfield is setting up shop in North America, opening its first wholly owned direct distributed distribution subsidiary outside of India. Royal Enfield, North America, will be based in Milwaukee, Wisconsin. Yeah, like about 45 minutes north of me. Home to another long-running motorcycle brand, yeah, Harley, and will handle business operations including marketing, service, financing, and dealer development. Until now, Royal Enfield worked with separate distributors in North America. Minnesota-based Classic Motor Works for the U.S. and Origin Motorcycles of Edmonton for the Canadian market. Classic Motor Works will be transitioning out of its distributing role through the end of 2015. Really great and expensive bikes, I think, in the 500cc class. And uh, sure, they're not British built anymore. They're all Indian built. But I think for a nice uh, second motorcycle, this would be something I would uh, actually consider maybe picking up a Royal Enfield to be a a beater bike or something just for around town or something like that. Uh, definitely for people that are into the classics, it's not got a lot of modern technology in it, doesn't have modern type of handling like the, the newest, greatest bikes do, but for the price and everything, and I guess besides the 500cc class, they're going to actually start making a 750cc displacement level motorcycle. So if you get a chance to check this article out, especially if you're into classic type of motorcycles. This next one is from my friend Brian D., and the website is indianpress.com. At Windows 10, Microsoft can disable pirated software, unauthorized hardware. This kind of gives me pause to think about. I've been considering myself back and forth about upgrading to possibly Windows 10 because it's free right now, but I'm just more and more things are kind of dissuading me from this. It's not that I'm really concerned about pirated software since I don't have any pirated software on my computer. I to me, the, the price of the software isn't so much for the software itself. I want the support and the upgrades and things like that. So, And I don't really think it's that expensive anymore. I don't think for, for saving money you really need to pirate software. But I have found in the past, and especially back to the days of Windows XP, you can all, a lot of times have false positives on this. And if they're looking for pirated software and you have something you legitimately purchased and they either disable it or sometimes strip it totally out of your machine and uninstall it, I don't like that idea at all. And with seeing some of the glitches and some of the problems people are having with uh, hardware, with some of their internet connections dropping out, sometimes not recognizing your internet access to even get you online, no, this is not really giving me confidence about Windows 10 that they will be quite ready for prime time for me. Uh, I definitely do not want that kind of thing where they would uh, decide for themselves what's pirated software and what it is not because all you need is a few false positives and then all of a sudden you really ruin somebody's day and it always tends to happen when you got something you really need to get done that's when all these things go haywire it's not when you're just wasting time surfing on the internet or something like that when I really want to get something done that's when all the glitches tend to hit and really give you a hard time so 
thanks but no thanks. I'm going to be hanging on to my Windows 7 for a long time to come. I'm sure eventually I will have to move into Windows 10. But even when I do, I'm seriously thinking if I get a new machine and I have no choice but to go with Windows 10, I may actually do a dual boot system into Ubuntu and for most of the time just spend my time in Ubuntu and then only when I have to actually do something like video editing or something like that, then switching back to uh, Windows 10. And this next one is from my friend Dave N., my Canadian friend Dave. Taurus 2x2, the Russian-made all-terrain motorcycle that can reach everywhere. I'll put a little bit of the video up here. This is really interesting, but one kind of sad thing about it is there does not seem to be anything new happening in about a year as far as this. They're still uh, looking for investors to this motorcycle, but this thing is one of those little crawler type of motorcycles that can pretty much seems to be able to get through anywhere a four-wheeler can, in some places even a four-wheeler can't. And there's two versions of it. There's a heavy version and a lightweight version. The lightweight version weighs about, I don't know, I think something in the range of 70 to 100 pounds. So if it should get stuck, which would be rare, you can just pick it up and carry it out of wherever it's stuck from. And basically, this is not a speed demon, but it will seem to be able to crawl through any kind of territory you need. What they're doing right now on the Russian website, I went and translated the Russian website with Google Translate, and besides looking for investors, they are willing to sell plans on how to build it. So I guess if you're kind of uh, set up like a machine shop or very well set up with tools and stuff as a tinker, you might be able to manufacture this thing yourself. But it's kind of cool the way it comes apart and packs in uh, two large bags, and you can even throw it in the back of your car if you have a hatchback or something like that. Uh, one thing that's kind of interesting is if you go to another site, there is a, uh, I think a feature, I think I've even talked about this before. There's a motorcycle called Rokon at uh, Rokon.com, R O K O N, and it's a similar motorcycle too, not quite as lightweight it seems as this, a little bit more heavier, but one of those uh, low pressure tire, balloon tire crawl through motorcycles that can get you places others can't, supposedly can float too in water. Uh, there's a video about it done on the Rokon site. Kind of expensive, though. The entry level on those things is about 6500 So the models, there's three models right now, and they run 6500 to $7,500, so not cheap at all unless you could get a deal on it, possibly used or something like that would be about the only way that it would end up being a good deal. So anyway, thank you, everybody, for submitting those articles. The next two weeks I will be on the road doing my Route 66 tour, so I'm still intending to do the TDD report while I'm on the road. But as far as the length of the subject matter and being able to post it at the normal schedule, that may be off a little bit. So um, give me a little bit of leeway in the next two weeks. So the next two Sundays could be early, could be late, could be even you know quite late, just depending on what I can put up and what material I can put up. But uh, you'll see a lot more posts from me as I'm cruising Route 66. We will be doing the route from Springfield, Missouri, going back towards Chicago. And 1954 Shadow will be with me for... Uh, most of the way and also uh, maybe a few other people might join us along the way just stay tuned and you will find out so that's about it for this week take care everybody i will catch you next week